Welcome to episode 236, Robert F. Smith, 12 Lessons. This is an outline of episode 236. Lesson number one, education, education, education. Both his parents are PhDs and high school principals. He went to Cornell University and Columbia, MBA, two Ivy League schools. Lesson number two, Curiosity Computer and Bell Lab. And well, what is this transistor? You told me a little bit about it. It was invented at this place called Bell Labs. I said, well, they must have some pretty smart people, though. Let me go check that out. So I go to the guidance counselor and say, what's this place called Bell Labs? Like, and they've got great uh, from time to time. And I got a job at Bell Labs. And that just opened the world for me uh, because I saw things. I saw the first cell phones way back when yeah. uh, that you know, took 15 years before they were commercialized. And I saw communication systems, and I saw you know, the, 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 the applications of science that I would have never known about growing up in my neighborhood. That changed my life. And from that, I told people I discovered the joy of figuring things out. So that's number three. He's a chemical engineer with four patents, two European patents, two American patents. That's number four, looking for 10x money. Goldman Sachs versus Kraft Food. He was earning $42,000 a year as a chemical engineer at Kraft Food when he heard how much money the investment bankers were making. Pretty well together today. One is technology uh, and, and the other is finance. And, you know, when I ultimately made a transition, uh, went off to business school, and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second, um, where I learned how much these people made in investment banking was obscene. I'm, <laughs> You know, I'm a hardworking engineer. I was making $42,000 a year. I didn't think you made any more money than that in the world. Uh, and, and then some of my friends were telling me about what these investment bankers made. They're making hundreds of thousands. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I know these people. There's That's at number five. He's not a nerd. Music is his passion. He's currently chairman of Carnegie Hall. That's at number six. Actions speak louder than words. For 20 years, that is, before he became self-made billionaire, he maintained a very low profile. Lesson number seven, community activists and giving back. Um, who will be at Columbia soon. And we also have a number of alumni. So as a president, past president of BBSA, how does it feel to be back? It is rare in our lives that we can be part of a community, a tribe, where we can actually share thoughts and insights that are going to be helpful. And the real question is, you know, how do you make sure you make a change in the world, in your community, leveraging your profession? You know, if you're an engineer, there are certain things you can do. If you're a teacher, there are other things you can do and different things you can do. And I think it's important uh, that I say, you know, you, you, you pick, a, pick a cause and have an effect, as opposed to meander without direction and just kind of glance through different sets of economic opportunities. But pick, pick a cause and make an effect. Lesson number eight, he found a niche, enterprise software, which improved productivity. To work on some of the early implementations of software into process industries. Think about it, software, technology, probably the most productive tool introduced in our business economy in the last 50 years, enterprise software. And then I run into this little software company based in Houston, Texas. I take him on as a sell side project. And through that, I learn how they're running this business. And I say, oh my God, if you actually took what they use as their best practices and laid them across these enterprise software companies, you could make a fortune. And so that's what led to the formation of Vista. Lesson number nine, design around best processes. Let me tell you what private equity is. Okay, it is typically eight white males sitting around a table arguing about which of their deals is better than the others. <laughs> okay, this one is an expert in real estate. This one is an expert or so-called expert in consumer products. This one says it's an expert in healthcare. They have 15 or 18 deals in their mind and 25 relationships. They think that if they bring them together, they can make money. And then they sit at the table and argue about, well, my deal is better than yours and I'm going to shoot your idea. And most people think, oh, by that, the cream will rise to the top. The best returns will, 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 will be, uh, will manifest out of that process, that crucible of, 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 of engaging. But go look at the facts. The facts show high volatility. Okay, some cases do great, some cases lose everything, right? And, you know, look, I don't call that investing. That's placing bets for investing. So Vista's design is around a couple of things, creating 
experts in identifying businesses that fit a specific model. Mission critical, business critical, enterprise software, high recurring revenues, and have what I call high economic rent, but aren't operating as efficiently as they can. Lesson number 10, be the emperor, not just the king. The, the fundamental thing about software and technology in most of these markets, in the past it has been a winner take all market. But that's when I keep talking about there, there are emperors, not just kings. Right now you've got a whole bunch of kings in these spaces. They will consolidate. There will be one emperor in that space, mm -hmm. most likely. Okay, and then it's a question, do they have a, a broad enough platform that they can move or port to other adjacent spaces? You know, Bezos did probably the best job in our lifetime of knowing that and building a platform that accelerated so that you didn't figure that out till 15 years later. It's like, oh my goodness, it just eliminated four industries, not just one. So the best and critical thinker. So when you all are evaluating businesses, listen to who is the critical thinker about the platform as opposed to the product. Lesson number 11, the fourth industrial revolution. We are truly in the, the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, there is a digitization of every single industry on the planet. And ultimately that will lead to the digitization of every single company in one way, shape, form, or another. Um, you read about it all the time, but you really have to, you know, depending upon what group you're in, you gotta get into the bowels of it. What do I mean by that? You have to now start to evaluate what is creating productivity in all its measures at the company level. You know, to some degree, disintermediate entire industries. Absolutely. You know, you've seen it. Like, you know, we have these talks about, oh, you know, everybody wants to be a king, right? No, you actually want to be an emperor, okay? And that's what Bezos has done, mm -hmm. if you think about it, because now you can actually, you know, disintermediate entire industries if you have the right platform. Lesson number 12, creating an environment that evolves, where new ideas and innovations are encouraged and trumpeted. And then a group of people who bring very specific subject matter expertise to making them operate more efficiently and then reusing the executives who you train over and over. It's a very efficient design and the wonderful thing about it, it is also now scalable. It works for $30 million companies and $2 billion companies. And this is the challenge I know I face and you know, I know you face it in, in a much bigger scale is creating an environment that, that evolves. Yeah. Right. But you, you, you have to be thoughtful about creating an environment where, where new ideas of innovation are not only welcomed, but they're encouraged, they're embraced, and the success of them are, are trumpeted. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.